Hey everyone, how are you doing? Things have been a little stressful of late, so I was very happy to receive this month's delivery of the Scribbler Box. We all need our bright spots during stressful times and you know, cool writing stuff. Does it get any better than that? I didn't do a video for last month's box because I just had too much going on. I will quickly show you what was in last month's box and then we'll open up the new one. I got the usual Scribbler writing contest card and the contest was provide three alternative titles for your book. Didn't have the time to even look at that and I'm really weak on titles so it's probably something I should be working on. Really cool door hanger. On the one side it says writer at work do not disturb and on the other side writer at work kind of not really just come in. When I've got my home office sorted out I fully plan on using this because it's good to be able to set boundaries with the people around you and let them know that you know when you're focused you kind of need to be left alone so you can do your thing and when it's okay to you know come in for a chat or ask a question or whatever. We got some chocolate chip cookies that I'm going to have with a cup of coffee one of these days. Vegan and gluten free for people with dietary restrictions so good to know that. We got our inside look. This one is about something called Twitmad which is a pitch event run on Twitter. You pitch your story and it's a way of finding potential agents. This was the card detailing the month's chat. I obviously missed this one. It was with Claire Draper. She is a literary agent who works primarily with creators who are BIPOC or LGBTQ+. So it's really great to have people like this who are representing those who historically have not been well enough represented in the world of literature. The Writing Passport, Emotional Touch Points 2. This would imply that at some point there was an Emotional Touch Points number one. I do not have that. I think I started getting these boxes after the first part of this came out. And then we have something that every writer loves. A notebook that says Writing Day. We can never have enough notebooks. I have got a number of notebooks that I have not started using yet. But you know, you can never have too many. There's no such thing as too many notebooks. And finally, we have our book, 1500 Miles from the Sun. There's no story summary on the back cover, but there are some comments and reviews and, you know, like praise for 1500 Miles from the Sun. From reading these, it looks like it's a gay romance. That's all I can tell you about it. I don't know what the storyline is or anything like that. But, you know, it could be a good read. And now that we're back up to date, let's take a look at what's in the August box. We'll open it up. I always forget to get something to actually open the box with. And I end up having to improvise with, you know, so I just used this part of my pen. It worked, but it would be so much easier if I just remembered to find something that's actually intended for that purpose. First up our writing contest card. At the end of your book, after that final resolution, what do you want readers to feel? <gasps> I love this one because that should be every writer's goal. What emotions and what feelings and what thoughts do you want your reader to have at the end of the story? What do you want, to, what do you want them to take with them as they finish reading? That is a great one. Gary Poppins Popcorn. I don't know who Gary Poppins is or what his popcorn is like. Whole grain and small batch. Uh, kettle corn. Doesn't say anything about flavors. Maybe there is not a flavor to this. There's a little blurb on the packet though. It says, are you a salty or a sweetie? If you crave our salty sweet kettle corn, we dare say the answer is both. That is intriguing. I tend to be a savory person myself. I like salty things. Don't have much of a sweet tooth. Like my favorite kind of chocolate is the chocolate that has the sea salt. That caramel and sea salt is off. That's a pairing from heaven. So is this something like that? We'll try it and see. And this is triangular shaped. You can see the shape from the top of the box there. They are actually ballpoint pens. That's very cool. I think it's a cool kind of novelty thing to have. I don't know if it would be comfortable to write with a pen like that. If you're writing for a long period of time, some people handwrite their novels. So they're writing for a long time. They need comfortable pens. 
I don't know if this would cut it for them, but you know, if you're just writing down the occasional note, you know, this would be a cool thing to maybe leave by the phone. Do people leave pens and notebooks by their phones anymore? That was always the thing when we were a kid. There was a pad of paper and a pen at the phone in case someone wasn't home and you wrote down a message. I don't think we do that anymore. I'm dating myself. A sticker that says, behold the first draft. I have spoken about first drafts on this channel and how important they are. If you've finished your first draft, give yourself a pat on the back. It is an amazing accomplishment. Oh, and to go with the pens, we actually have a notepad. What was I saying? A notepad and a pen by the phone. This one says it's a good day to write. It is always a good day to write. I do agree with that sentiment. And much like notebooks, there is always room for another notepad. The inside look. Let's see what this inside look is about. How a 14 page synopsis changes when writing a 350 page novel. For most writers, planning a novel includes writing a chapter by chapter or scene by scene synopsis of everything that goes on in the book. And you actually write the synopsis and then you write the story based on what's on that synopsis. So you have like a paragraph that you would expand into a scene. And this edition of The Inside Look gives an example of a synopsis. It'll be good to read that and see how it compares with mine. The writing passport is about resolutions. So how does the story resolve itself? How does the story end? How is your main conflict tied up? How are you tying up the loose ends of your subplots? And where are you leaving your characters at the end of the story? Those are all things you have to think about when it comes to the resolution of your story. Exclusive chat with Daniel Wilcox. Daniel Wilcox is an international best-selling author with experience in many different areas of storytelling. He is an author coach, part of Digital Story Studio, Hawk and Cleaver, co-founder of the fiction podcast, The Other Stories, CEO of Horror Imprint, Devil's Rock Publishing, and the co-host of the Next Level Authors podcast. Daniel has written 40 plus books in five years for himself, and on behalf of ghostwriting clients. His work includes Sins of Smoke, the When Winter Comes series, and The Other Side of a Horror Anthology. From reading this, it seems to me like this writer specializes in the genre of horror, which is not my favorite genre. I have had to write horror stories as part of writing contests. They were so difficult to write, and I have trouble reading them as well. And as always, the highlight of the box is the novel of the month, The Words We Whisper by Mary Ellen Taylor. This one does have a blurb on it. Let's see what it says. True love is never last. As a hospice nurse, Zara Mitchell has already seen more death than most people will experience in a lifetime. So when her older sister asks her to help care for their ailing grandmother, Zara agrees, despite strained family relationships. Though pale and tired, Nana has lost none of her sharp mind. She's fixated on finding something long forgotten, and she immediately puts Zara to work cleaning out the attic. Unexpectedly, amid the tedium of sifting through knickknacks and heirlooms, Zara also reconnects with a man she's attracted to, but whose complicated past makes romance seem impossible. But then Zara finds what Nana was looking for, a wooden chest, an emerald brooch, a leather-bound journal. As she immerses herself in stories of heroism and loss set against the backdrop of war-torn Italy in 1943, Zara finds answers to questions she didn't know she had, and they change everything she thinks she knows about love, regret, and seizing the day. So that's a new book for me to add to my pile of books to be read. I'm actually looking forward to that. It's got the sort of the historical element with a bit of romance, with a bit of intrigue. And that's it for another great box. I have actually started making a wall in my office using these boxes as bricks because why not? When I've collected enough of these to actually fill the space, I think it'll look kind of cool. Thanks for watching everyone. If you subscribed and you like writing related content, hit that button and join my small but growing community. I aim to provide informative and fun content and I'd love to have you here. Have a great day. Keep reading. Keep writing. Let your imagination fly. I'll see you in the next video.